Matt Wright, and Spike Cohen. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, and welcome to the Vanguard. For Spike, if he was a member of King Arthur's Round Table, his name would have been Sir Cum-Sized Cohen. I am Matt Wright, and together we are traversing the muddied waters of... Yeah, that is really hard to do that sentence. There's no better way to kick off this week uh, other than to start off with some inspiring words from the person who is one heartbeat away from the presidency. Ladies and gentlemen, here is this week's Deep Thoughts with Kamala Harris. Deep Thoughts by Kamala Harris. We know that we really are quite behind in terms of maximizing our collective understanding about how we will engage on the technology of today and what we can quickly and easily predict will be the technology over the next decades. So to maintain our position as the United States of America on this issue, it is critical that we work together to understand where we are, to recognize and have the courage to speak truth about what is obsolete, and then to partner to ensure that we are speaking the same language with the same motivation, inspired by the opportunity of it all, but then doing the work of updating how we have been talking and thinking about our exploration in space. So again, this is... <laughs> I think we all remember a moment where we had to give a report and this could be in school and business something and you have no idea what you're talking about and you get up there and wing it. So you may be tempted to empathize with her. That's a script. That, yeah. She is reading she something that. that supposedly the greatest thinking minds in the political world put together for her. Or she is stubbornly insisting on writing her own scripts, which would explain this a lot better. So when when I was making that video, <laughs> super fan Sarah Anderegg was sitting next to me, and I had the transcript, so I knew what was said, and I and I had seen like clips of the entire thing, so I picked out this right. segment, and so I was yep. playing it out loud, and Sarah is just sitting there next to me. Uh, I don't know what she was doing. Um, baking. I don't know. But uh, she was. Wow. Sitting next <laughs> to you baking, huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's but, talent. Yes. Uh, and she was sitting there, you know, just not half paying attention to whatever I was doing. And then right. she's hearing Kamala saying the Kamala words, which is the only way to put those. Um, yeah. And then she goes, to. <laughs> to increase our exploration in space. And Sarah just stopped baking. She stopped mixing the bowl and she- On the couch. On yeah. the couch, yeah. It was actually in bed. So, uh, but she's, wow. <laughs> yeah, she's, she, she is a Talk multi- Talk about multitasking. Yeah, she's wow, a multitasking pretty, master. Uh, wow. But she just stopped and she like, I'm sorry, what? What was she yep. talking about? And I was like, yeah, she's talking yep. about- exploration in space and she was nothing in there made any sense for that it no <laughs> it doesn't make sense for anything it is literally so how are we going to get this done and you could say well we just got to figure out what needs to be done to explore in space instead you go we need to have the people in the room together talking about the hard questions identifying what the solution is having truthful conversations about what isn't helpful or she said obsolete or what. like <laughs> right. it's the it's just like dragging on a mindful fully aware or in, inspired by the opportunity ahead like it's like none of this means anything and she does means it a lot nothing she went to a conference of mayors and told them all that they're the mayor <laughs> like there's is it's if There's you dream nothing... it, you can get it done. You know why? Oh, because you're the mayor. Because you thought of it. Because you and you're the mayor. Because you're the mayor. What? <laughs> what? Do you remember yeah. when she was no, talking to the is, group um... of astronauts about space exploration, and it was 
just the most insipid, wild, rambling. No, I need to see that. After this show, I'm going to see that. Okay. I need... Yeah, I've got it somewhere. Um, I, I, I think we that. played it I on this that. show. <laughs> We probably have. The thing is, I've been so, you know, I, I'll still have people that will go, man, it's a real shame you didn't get to debate Pence and Harris. And I'm like, well, yeah, but have you also, have you ever heard them talk? Like, it makes perfect sense why they wouldn't have me. That would have been possibly the largest, and I'm not saying this because I'm like the greatest speaker ever, but just because I have a normal level of speaking ability even, that would have been the greatest emperor has no clothes moment in human history where these two are just jabbering on about whatever it is they're trying to say. And I would go in and go, yeah, here's why you're wrong. Here's why you're wrong. Here's the solution in like 30 seconds. It's just, it's just, it's mind boggling. It is. So absolutely. When that debate was going on, the smartest person on that stage, I still say was the fly. But was the fly was the fly, but and all like Pence not he's not a great speaker he's not the smartest dude in the room ever except for possibly that well the smartest dude in that room was probably yeah. in the state well, he was in the stand somewhere he was in the we auditorium. said that during we said that during the uh, on on that stage he was uh, uh well except for the I guess the best boy grip was probably right. the <laughs> smartest the gaffer. I don't even know what a gaffer is, but a, ga- a, a gaffer, a gaffer is a person that does tape. He tapes off. Him. There you go. Gaffer, probably the assistant gaffer was the, uh, was the best one there. But the, you know, certainly I would say the, it, it, the better of that debate performance, I, I think we even said of those two that were participating was Pence. Like he actually made a couple points and she would say, well, we need to, or she actually she'd say, I'm talking. Okay. That's this is a debate. This is a debate. <laughs> anyway, um, so speaking of interesting women, Finnish Prime Minister is, is it Sana Marin? Sana Marin? Sa- it, Sana, because she's Finnish, Sana. and uh, Finland is well known for their saunas. Her name is Sana Marin. Uh, Sana Marin. Sana Marin got into some got into some hot water. Huh? Because her name's Sana. Over (laughs) this. So here we have, she is the one in the black tank top dancing there with her friends. This is the prime minister of Finland uh, out partying with a couple of friends dancing. Uh, This video Uh, leaked. uh, (laughs) This video leaked uh, and many people Many people <laughs> against her party uh, have been right. using it to try to say that she is unfit for office, office. Uh, saying that she is unfit for office. And it's like, OK, I understand that you may think that that is not how a prime minister should act. OK, that's fine. But she is like, I think she's 35 or 36 years old. Um, she runs a country, you know, it's Finland. So, you know, she kind of runs a country. Um, <laughs> no, she runs a kind of country. Yeah, she run. Yeah, she runs a kind of country. Um, kind of, it's kind of a country. I'm certain it's stressful. And every once in a while you want to go out and cut loose and have some fun with your friends and you're still in your thirties. So you're not going to fall and hurt yourself. Um, so I understand where she's coming from. Um, I do understand People saying, well, if she's doing drugs, uh, she should be thrown out of office because they're illegal here. So in order to help with those rumors, she took a drug test to prove that she wasn't doing drugs at these parties. And I kind of get that. I kind of get it. I mean, I I will say, I mean, if she's not overturning the drug laws, she shouldn't be doing the drugs. Well, that's the other thing, right? Like, we no more of this Hunter Biden nonsense. If you if you want to have a war on drugs and you have to live by it as well, or you need to be thrown in gulag too. Uh, but um, watching that video, I, I will say I got nervous in that second clip when they were on the knees together, and I'm like, is this like Requiem for a Dream? How that ended, like <laughs> Jennifer Jennifer Connelly, that whole thing is that. 
Well, because if it is, that might be a pro. I could see how that would be I potentially an issue. Yes. Potentially. Potentially. And depending on how the drug test comes back, because it hasn't come back as of the recording of this oh. video, uh, it, that oh. could be how that ended. And we just didn't get that video. But <laughs> <laughs> on... <laughs> They kept that well, one. Frankly, private. a politician could be doing worse things with their time. Right. Uh, and on Friday, she told reporters, I consider these accusations to be very serious. And though I consider the demand for a drug test unjust for my own legal protection and to clear up any doubts, I've taken a drug test today, the results of which will come in about a week. And good on her. You know, I may not agree okay. with everything that her party stands for. I may not like her country all that much. Um, you may not know enough to decide whether you like it or not. True. But for the people who are out there saying this is unprofessional of a prime minister, we just have to show them this. This is our president dancing. If you're listening on Anchor, thank you. And to be honest, oh gosh, I would prefer a president with some rhythm. Yeah, she was doing the hip motion yeah, and she, the whole thing. He goes out there playing Despacito and going, eh, eh. And I couldn't play the audio for the Despacito because the last time we did, we had no, to of fight, we no, had to of fight with YouTube. Um, We're so, actually going to get demonetized because I said the word Despacito. <laughs> Despacito. But, the, but so I remember that because that was Biden's version of, of Trump's taco bowl saying – Trump Tower serves the best taco bowls. I love Hispanics. Like he was more, he was more in your so, face about it. But Joe Biden walking out there and going, "Hey, listen to this pop song that you know started as a as a you know reggaeton in the reggaeton community. Look, look this is a, a a you people song. And I think it's pretty nice. Like it, it's it was the same energy. And this chick so, is out here grinding with her friends, and I see nothing wrong with it." So would you say that that was Joe Biden's version of Joe Biden's you guys are as unique as the breakfast tacos? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually. And so I want to say I, I gave Joe Biden a hard time about that. But that was I feel bad for her because that was her. She didn't come up with that. Some speechwriter thought that was good. Someone grew up watching Dora the Explorer and just was like, yeah, this is my moment to show <laughs> the Hispanic people that Joe Biden is all about them. Breakfast tacos. <laughs> and and so she and so she she said that thing I, and I almost wonder if part of her while she's reading it is like breakfast tacos is that what you had me come up here to say to this crowd here and uh, and so I felt kind of that was Joe Biden riffing right <laughs> he's just like yeah 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 whatever and then Donald Trump it's the next level where he tweeted it out like he wrote it and put the picture and went yeah send. So that's, I mean, there's levels there. there are, yeah. On the level of egregiousness, I would say Joe Biden's was the least one. But her, you know, this this chick, you know, doing her little dance with her friends. Yeah. And but I, I didn't see anything wrong with it. Uh, yeah, I didn't I didn't see anything wrong with it. More videos have come out since that one came out. Um, and it shows her dan oh, no. dancing with some guy that's not her husband. Um, and I'm like, well, she's a politician, so... Mm. I'd be more shocked if she was dancing with her husband. Um, <laughs> We've already established prostitution. Now we just work on the price. That's right. the you know it it it, it is what it is. Yeah. But I uh, I um yeah I I don't I from at least from that video like uh, and and for those who find great offense to it, uh, we're about to start electing millennials, and then after that. We're going to start electing Gen Z. And for some reason, we skipped Gen X. They just, they, no, we're not electing any Gen X people. We're going straight from boomers to 30-something-year-olds. We're not, Gen X doesn't exist, doesn't care. They listened to Timothy Leary. They tuned out. They what, they they turned on, they tuned out, and they dropped, tuned, they turned on, tuned in, and dropped out. And they're done. And uh, and now this is the the millennials and, and Gen Z are coming in, and there's going to be a lot of TikTok challenges. That's all I got to say. Can you so can you imagine when the first Gen Zer is like, yeah, I'm going to run for president, and somebody's like, okay, well, let's pull up that TikTok and finding yeah. all of all of the cringe I, stuff that they posted on TikTok in 2022. I, I think at that point, I think we are closely approaching some kind of like event horizon of cringe 
where it just doesn't matter because everyone is so cringe that cringe ceases to be a thing like no one even cringes any like the 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 natural reaction to cringe we are so desensitized we just don't we just stare blankly at cringe and don't even react i i think that in order for us or we'll nuke ourselves we that's the other thing that might happen is we might point the nukes straight up to just come right back down because we can't take the cringe anymore it's going to be one or the other either we're going we're going to adapt to survive or as a species we're going to commit suicide it's it's there is no in between and speaking of <laughs> extinction level events anthony fauci is leaving in december possibly causing the death of all mankind it's true he is he is leaving in december as we have all heard over the last well by the time you watch us 48 to 72 hours um yes but before he left he wanted to make sure that he left us with one last i have a different word in these notes but we can we can safely call this cringe rant from dr anthony fauci it's called the Fauci effect, which is sort of like, you know, no, it's, as, no one says that. Trust me, I'm, I, I don't get excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's he's, nice. He's but, lying. I mean, it's, it's, I, I, people go to medical school now. People are interested in science, not because of me, because people, most people don't know me, who I am. My friends know me. My wife knows me, but people don't know me. It's what I symbolize. And what I symbolize in a in an era of the normalization of untruths and lies and and all the things you're seeing going on in society from january 6th to everything else that goes on people the craving for consistency for integrity for truth and for people caring about people so i i i i just and i i have to it, here is a maskless man sitting next to a maskless man in front of a crowd of masked people explaining how he represents truth and integrity and in in a in a sea of of misinformation and lies. I, I, this is a man who has built his entire career on misinformation and lies. Yes. Everything. Lies, yeah. When he first became, when he first started getting it up to the heads of the uh, National Institute of Infectious Diseases and something else, uh, when he first started getting up there towards the top of that was during the first was during the AIDS epidemic of the '80s, and he was telling people, "Oh, you got to be careful because you're going to end up AIDS is going to be on your countertops, and you're going to get AIDS from sharing your." fruit loops with your child and you don't want to get AIDS is just going to become this massive epidemic then when that didn't turn out to be true because yep. it AIDS just is did, an STD uh, yeah because AIDS is an STD and it didn't ever get on surfaces and stay there every single issue that we every single uh, pan epidemic pandemic that we've had in this nation uh, he has been at the forefront saying this is going to kill three to five people. This is going to, you know, three out of every five people, every three out of five people is going to get yep, it. And, yep. you know, three out of five of them is going to die. You know, he did it with Zika. Yep. He did it with uh, SARS. He did it with uh, swine flu. Bird flu. Bird flu. Swine flu. He threatened it with bird flu, which is what got uh, uh, George Bush to authorize him to create the lockdown protocols that they then used 15 years later with COVID the bird flu was expected or or has a fatality rate of around 90 percent, but thankfully it's only spread from very very close contact between infected birds and people it does not spread from person to person but th that those protocols were created in case it ever did cross that barrier and did start spreading from person to person so the lockdowns were created for a virus with a 90 percent fatality rate COVID has something like a 0.9 percent so like by two orders of magnitude, this thing <laughs> was weaker, and yet they still used this. And they're still and they're still pushing it. They they push the lockdowns almost from the yep. beginning of COVID, almost from the beginning yep. of COVID. You can say that the mask at the beginning he said no, the masks won't work, and then he said no, you need the masks. 
you can say, okay, the science, you know, we learned more about the virus now, or you can just say he was no, an authoritarian no. piece of shit. Um, yeah. <laughs> but he said, you don't need the mask. Okay, now you need the mask. Okay, we need to do lockdowns. He's quoted as saying lockdowns help with getting people to get the vaccine, so that way they can be... Uh, uh, that way they can leave their homes. He's quoted as saying children should be forced to get vaccines in order to go to school for COVID and then compared COVID to polio and uh, tuberculosis and uh, the other ones that you get as a child. I don't remember what other ones you get. Oh, RR, uh, uh, MMR, uh, measles, measles, mumps, ru rubella. rubella. I like I like that you were gonna say rheumatoid arthritis and I was gonna let yeah you. I, w um, I was I was like that's not right that is definitely not right um, <laughs> he he has pushed he was pushing the vaccines throughout all of it and then when you add on on top the uh, gain of function research that mm -hmm. his industry that hit that his department was helping fund yep and then he was lying to Congress about it and then on yep. top of all of it. He killed a lot of dogs. The man was a... It, for no good reason. You know, a lot of people came out... You know, for those who don't know this story, basically it was revealed that his uh, uh, NIAID, his, under the National Institutes of Health, National Institute of Ad something Infectious Disease, um, uh, he uh, was doing... Uh, he was authorizing um, the use of, uh, of, of drugged beagles... Uh, to uh, have them uh, have their faces eaten by maggots uh, in order, and of course they die as a result, in order to test a veterinary pharmaceutical on them. Yep. They could have just tested it. it they're dogs. There's no placebo mm. effect. There's no need for a double-blind study. <laughs> just give it to the dog. You don't even need a placebo. You don't need a control. You're just giving it to the dog. The dog doesn't know, oh, you're giving me some. This must be for the maggot thing. Like, just give it to the dog and see if it works. This is actually very common in veterinary uh, pharmaceuticals. They just try it on the dog to see if it works. This was not for people. This was for a veterinary medicine. And they decided, you can fill in the blanks as to why, to torture dozens, possibly hundreds of beagle puppies in the most, one of the most unimaginable ways of torturing something to death. Having its face slowly eaten by maggots until it dies. Do you know how long it takes to die from having your face eaten by maggots? Like that's not a source, that's not a cause of death. They That's took not, it, like, they it just, surgically removed their vocal cords because the beagle so howling was, yeah, be, the beagle's yep. howling was so terrible that they were like, no, just cut those out and then we'll continue with this experiment. That is how, and he oversaw it and he approved all of it. That is how sick yep. this man is. And then he yep. helped shut down the entire economy for over a year because he said, no, yep. we need the lockdown because we need people to be afraid so that way they'll get the vaccine. He is a terrible human, and my only question to you, Spike, is when he said that he was going to be starting his next chapter, CEO of Pfizer? Oh, he's definitely, I don't know about, well, I, <laughs> actually, while you're saying that, yeah, CEO of Pfizer or Moderna or some new Luciferian company. I, uh, I, I, I imagine I, it's going to be one of the companies he made a lot of money for. I would imagine so. He's certainly going into the lobbying world, right? And and his speaking fees are going to be through the roof. I hope the only way that the Republican Party can redeem themselves from the fact that Donald Trump didn't completely expose that clown, fire him, uh, and, 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 and just completely dismantle everything he built is by actively investigating fully the link between Echo Health Alliance, the weaponized SARS-like viruses that were created under that gain-of-function research in the Wuhan lab, or as I called it on Kennedy, the Wuhan lob. That's what I called it on live TV. Uh, the the uh, and do uh, funding or or do research into that uh, uh, investigation into that funding, and if it is determined that they uh, broke any laws, which it seems like they did, but especially if it's determined that the SARS not the Cove SARS two uh, that uh, or SARS Cove two 
is uh, derived from one of those, he should be, he and everyone else involved should be fully prosecuted. The book thrown at them made a complete and total example of because they effectively committed mass murder on a scale that is comparable with the Nazis and the Soviets and the Chai Coms during the Great Leap Forward and Pol Pot. And, and the difference is they did it on a global scale. Um, so that's what I hope the next chapter is. And if the Republican Party does do that, I will give a nice golf clap and say that'll do, pig, uh, and be a little bit nicer to them for uh, several weeks. Uh, if they don't do that, then I will say this is just more proof of how useless the Republicans are as anything other than agitprop for people who are mad at the government. And I, and I will say that it is not lost on uh, anybody with a working brain that he is saying, I'm going to step down in December after the November elections before the House would take up their uh, new new positions. Because it looks like while the Senate is up in the air and we aren't sure if the Senate is going to uh, flip or not, it's, it's close. It could. It might not. Um, it's really down to one, maybe two races now. One of them's getting a little bit closer. But... Yeah, it's mainly coming down to uh, two races. So the House, we can pretty safely say is going to go to the Republicans and the Republicans can yeah. then subpoena him to every congressional hearing for the next two years. And if he's yep. not the head of the uh, National Institute of Health, then he's not he won't be as obliged to come. Well, goodbye. Exactly. And goodbye to the uh, keep in mind, this man is the highest paid salaried employee of the United States federal government and will be after he retires. I hope that if they discover uh, that he was involved in the that this gain of function research that we already know happened um, was the cause of the COVID-19 pandemic, that that's we rename it to the Fauci effect. <laughs> so, so uh, I'm gonna, I have to give you some. Of... I got to give you some backstory on this one before we jump right into okay. it because I don't know if you know. <laughs> in Miami, uh, a cop was involved in a shooting uh, where he was actually pulling over a bad guy. Like this was a person who was a bad guy, um, and yes. he was involved in a shooting, and a cop was killed. That's basically all the backstory you need to know. Now, yes. Miami firefighter Kevin Newcomb was fired after private messages in a group in a group message with friends um, because of what he said. And I'm going to read these to you, read this to you. And I want to see where you line up with Kevin <laughs> and where you don't. <laughs> Because I was kind of all over the place with this one. Uh, so the, yeah. the the text went, who cares? Another <laughs> another dead cop. Probably against gun control. Already I'm not liking Kevin. Already not liking Kevin not liking... because, first of all, Kevin, even if the cop doesn't like gun control, he'll definitely point a gun at someone to enforce it. Right. It's true. Oh. Then they didn't... Already wrong, Kevin. <laughs> They didn't give an, and then it was edited out, expletive. When kids were dying in that school shooting, they stood outside. I'm not sure what that expletive was because they didn't give an... I have no idea what that would be. Oh, Anne. Yeah, because it's Anne. Anne upholstered rats... <laughs> Yeah, they didn't give an ass. They didn't I, like. I can't really think of any excellent. Didn't give an ass. <laughs> right. That's the new. That's what the kids are saying. And I want to yeah. say that uh, a lot of people in the media are saying this is about Uvalde, and I'm like, no, no people. No, nope, that's about Parkland. This is about Parkland. Get, yep. get, I know you need to keep pushing that narrative, but this one's about Parkland because they're in Miami. That one's about Parkland. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Cops exist for the government to exercise its monopoly on violence. <laughs> they want the whole world to stop when one of theirs goes down. Mm -hmm. 
How many idiots I had to transport with honor guard their dead bodies from coronavirus because they were all too stupid to wear masks or get vaccinated. <laughs> all cops are good. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, uh, wearing a mask, uh, it was, wasn't going to have anything to do with it. Uh, I, I put it this way. If you're in a group of people that needs the vaccine to prevent you from dying from COVID, I don't know, maybe don't be a cop. Like, I, I, I mean, right. like, li, li, if if you look at the, I mean, outside of anecdotal, you know, uh, um, there, there are always outliers, very unfortunate outliers. Um, but, you know, generally speaking, COVID is a, a deadly illness for the elderly, the frail and the the infirm people with pre-existing conditions the morbidly obese and so like a bunch of people that really like why are you a, a cop you know right. outside of those immediate outliers so if there was this a massive amount of of cops dropping dead from from covid the the vaccine or the mask well the mask wasn't gonna, gonna do a thing and and the the vaccine might have saved them but also maybe why are they cops right but i get i get a sentiment i get a sentiment i mean yeah. All cops are good for is protecting the rich property owners and the status quo. Everything else is a farce. This one I can guess. Fuck the police. I would assume that's what that. <laughs> it wouldn't be ass the police. Yeah. It would. It would definitely be. Yeah. So and so he was fired. So Kevin, this is Kevin Newcomb, and he was fired. He was fired. Now this was a private message yep, that, that got, he shared that somebody with someone else. Yeah, this was that somebody in the group message but online. Yeah. So for those keeping count, whatever you think about this statement, whatever you think about whether he should have been fired or not, for those keeping count, if you shoot an unarmed person and are a police officer, you will get desk duty while the unions and the investigators and internal affairs desperately try to frame a way out of saying that you that you were justified in killing that person. If you are a firefighter who says, fuck the police, I don't care if one of them died, you get fired. Oh, in a private message where you're not even sharing this publicly. You're just saying it right. to like he a friend did, or something. Right. And, you know, I may not agree with what you say, but I defend your right to say it. Like, yeah. this is that example. I have a right to that opinion. Yeah. I do not think he should have been fired. It was just no. reading it. I was like, when I read the statement initially, I was like, oh. initially I was like, eh, screw this guy. I'm glad he lost his job. I don't care. And then I was like, well, actually, I'm kind of, I'm kind of on the same. Oh no, no, you're, you're. Uh, so this is, th this was a roller coaster ride of emotion reading this <laughs> because this guy is obviously like a left winger, like a hardcore progressive yeah. type. Uh, he has not gone far enough, far enough left where you get your guns back. Sadly, I would encourage him to keep, <laughs> to keep either, either correct back or just keep traveling. It's a horseshoe. Just keep traveling back to the left. Eventually you get your guns back. Uh, and you stop supporting, uh, vaccine mandates, uh, that the government mandates that a corporation injects something into your body in order for you to be allowed to function as a human being. Uh, so if he goes that far, now we, we have a lot more points of, of, uh, a commonality, but I, I mean, I laughed, I cried, there was, there was, there, there was, there was, there were fine, very fine people on both sides of this statement. Um, so no, I. <laughs> that is the best I, it way is to what, put that. But yeah, right no. There. I mean, especially considering he is a public employee, uh, it, the, he, which means he's the a, a employee of the government. So this isn't even you know like a private employee. I believe should be able to fire someone for almost anything, and 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 certainly for yeah. you know it, you know said something that doesn't reflect our values or whatever. There's not a, a single reason why a. Uh, a government employee, why the government should be able to fire someone who does their job, unless they can prove that he doesn't do his job. If they can show that he just didn't care that this cop died, then, uh, and, and even stated why he didn't care, then I, I don't think he should lose his job. No, so I don't. Yeah. He's and got quite a lawsuit coming. Yeah. I don't think he should have lost his job. And, you know, I believe in the First Amendment. Um, and especially you shared it in a private message with people and then it got shared out. Like, you you, yeah. you didn't tweet this. 
Um, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, I could see the argument, even though I'd probably still stick up for him, I could see the argument of saying, well, this is just a level of professionality and blah, 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 blah. This is someone who died. A, a first responder shouldn't be making statements saying they don't care that someone died or something like that. that this is a private message. Like, right. he didn't expect others to hear. People are allowed to have opinions. This is one step away from, I bet you thought this. Yeah. I'm guessing you thought this. Mm, boy, you better not think that. So yeah, I, uh, yeah, uh, free Kevin. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, we could try to get Kevin on the show and deconstruct this a little and explain why like gun control is a tool that the police use to ensure the status quo. He's there. He's he's close. He's close. Wait till he finds out which neighborhoods his fire department probably. I don't want to say definitely, but his neighborhood probably defends more often little bit faster than other neighborhoods. That's an excellent point. <laughs> wow, that is an excellent point. Yeah, what's your department's fault uh, response? Time? But you know what? He might have tw he might have been uh, out here uh, private messaging about that too. This guy might be a class warrior. We don't know. We, we don't know. Could be. So release the logs and free Kevin. Um, <laughs> and so, but also while we're releasing the logs and free Kevin, if you have not already, then be sure to go to anchor.fm slash muddywater slash subscribe to become a subscriber to the Muddy Waters family today. What does that get you? Well, I thought you'd never ask. In addition to the two episodes, episodes a week that we release we also have a special and much better third episode that is only for our subscribers now we get to get away with all sorts of stuff we get to show stuff that has copyrights and we get to cuss more and we get to talk about the forbidden truths that they don't want you know we don't really actually do a lot of that yeah, we, we, we do a lot of we we have we we, we really not, don't censor our, yeah we don't really censor ourselves all that much on the subscribers yes no 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 well that reminds me of my joke that you know when i was looking i was trying to figure out you know what was going on with all these hurricanes and so i went to the stormfront website and uh i don't know much more about uh about uh what's uh you know about you know when the hurricanes are coming but i think i know who's causing them <laughs> anyway head on over to anchor.fm slash muddy water slash subscribe and uh, become a subscriber and you too can hear some irreverent humor <laughs> like that well i guess you can hear that here too but you can uh, have lots of fun there also you get an ad free uh viewing and listening experience on uh all of the uh, podcasting platforms including anchor and spotify and all of your favorite uh podcasting platforms when you listen to or watch muddy waters um and you get uh, all sorts of exclusive uh, subscriber only discounts to our store and that of our participating vendors all sorts of fun stuff for the low low price of only ten dollars a month so anchor.fm slash muddy water slash subscribe and we will see you tomorrow at 8 p.m and where we're going we don't need roads